Stanislaw Robert Liberta here with AV Ultra, and today we're going to take a look at the Rigid Mask Tracker. In the new version of Premiere Pro 2015, we have a mask tracker, and I like to think of this as an automated roto tool. This is just a quick example of something I shot over the summer at a motorcycle show. This is something that's very common in the post-production world and really just the video production world nowadays where you know we might have something that starts one color or we have a model whose face is a little too dark for the exposure uh, because we shot it improperly or because we got extra shadow or a variety of different reasons. So here's my original piece of footage. I'm actually going to drag that into a whole new comp. Just like in After Effects, now in Premiere, you can go ahead and drag your raw footage and drag it right into Make a New Comp, and it will make a new comp out of that. Pretty convenient. Something that I, I use quite often in After Effects. And first, let's assess the scene. So we want to brighten up our talent's face here. And we want to make sure that we can see the entirety of this gentleman's face in our shot. So right here, I can see the entirety of his head and face. I'm going to pull up a brightness and contrast filter. And I'm going to drop that right onto my clip here. And I'm going to go to my effect controls. And you can see there's my brightness and contrast. And if I just brighten it up, well, that's just brightening my whole scene. And if I do my contrast, you can see what that's doing with my contrast. Pretty self-explanatory. However, now that I've got these ellipse masks, as soon as I click on this ellipse mask, it creates an actual mask here. So I'm just going to drag this over here. And I'm going to speed this up here so we can kind of see the end result. So I've got my mask on him. And now I'm going to adjust for my brightness. All right, so we're going to brighten him up a little bit and add a little bit more contrast, maybe just a touch more. So that way he pops out of the scene there. And let's take a look at our before and after. All right, no different than what we'd be doing in Photoshop or any still frame here. Now, first let's talk quickly about what these tools are. So I'm going to take this mask path, right, and I can animate this by hand. I can just click on my stopwatch here and move it forward a few frames. And we'll just line that back up, make sure it stays on his face. And now that mask has been animated between those two spots. All right, so it follows along there. However, that can still be pretty tedious as far as when I'm trying to do something fairly quick and easy. So I just went back to my single keyframe here. And let's take a look at these tools here. Notice we have this track backwards one frame, track backwards, track forward, and track forward one frame. I have an additional wrench here, and this tells me what kind of track is it. If something is just moving X and Y like we have in our camera here, this would just be position. If something is, say, moving in X, Y and turning, we're also going to want to track for rotation. And if something is moving towards us, say like we're driving a car and we're coming up on a sign that we need to replace, that might be position, scale, and rotation. One caveat with this here, I found that the position and rotation and the scale position and rotation aren't that great. Uh, they work for the most part, but I find that it tends to lose the track very easily and anytime I'm doing anything really complicated that has some rotation or scale, I'm jumping into After Effects and more so I'm jumping right into Mocha so that way I can go ahead and track it properly. If you want more information on Mocha, check out my tutorial video that I have all about replacing a sign using Mocha. However, this is just another tool that you have that you may or may not find useful. All right, so we're going to leave this as position right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to track this forward, right? And as soon as I hit track forward, you notice that it's going to go ahead and progress through the track. And it's doing a pretty good job of holding on there. While it's actually tracking, it's trying to stay on to these pixels, all right? And you can see that it's creating these keyframes as it's moving through my footage here. And it's going to go until the very end, but notice what happens right when his face leaves the scene completely. The mask doesn't know what really to do. It's still looking for those pixels, but that pixel information isn't there anymore, so it wants to stay on the scene. That's another drawback of using this particular tool 
as opposed to Mocha. Mocha will follow this straight up out of the scene and say, oh, hey, that's fine. It, it's up here somewhere. I'll find it when we get back to it. So I'm going to go back to where that was just tracking. I think it was right about this frame here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to track this in the other direction. And I can go ahead and play that back now that that's done. And you can see that that mask is staying on his face. I'm just going to drop this down to a quarter resolution. This machine is just a little bit slower. One thing to note now, I just changed this down to quarter resolution right for the playback. Whenever we're doing a mask tracking, always make sure it's at full. Let's go ahead and add a secondary color correction to him. So I'm going to add some curves to this too. Right? And this is going to introduce something interesting to us. So we've got our curves, and you'll notice I can add another mask. So if I just create the same mask again, right, and maybe I want to put it uh, just to even out his tones a little bit more, take out a little bit of the red, and I'm going to go ahead and have to create a new mask. Now, this is one issue that I've kind of found with doing multiple effects on a certain piece of footage in Premiere. I have to go one at a time, and I have to track each mask one at a time as well. So let's go ahead and we're just going to remove a little bit of that red. And there we go. And you can see it's hitting right these edges here. And if you look closely, we've got this dotted line across here. This dotted line is our feather amount. And if I come up here to my mask feather, I can pull that up. And as I pull that up, you can see what's happened here. We have an inner and an outer range there. I also have this little handle that I can grab onto, and this will increase and decrease my mask as well. So this is doing the same thing. It's just giving me a handle here. Another thing to note with using the rigid mask tracker in Premiere is that it's not as fast as if I was just doing anything in After Effects. All right, so now I've got this other mask. What I can do is I can copy this other mask and I can paste it here, right? And so now you can see what I have here is I actually do have that same mask on his face there. So that's one way I've been able to kind of figure this out. Another thing that I tend to work with a lot when I'm doing some color correction or anything in Premiere is I never actually put it on the individual footage. I always use an adjustment layer. So if I create an adjustment layer here, I find that if I try putting anything, any of these masks on these adjustment layers, it doesn't hold on as well, if at all sometimes, than if I put it on the original footage. So what I tend to do is I'll take my brightness and contrast here and paste it at the very beginning so that way all my keyframes go over there. All right, so that's one way that we can go ahead and adjust for our talent. I'm just gonna undo some of that. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this gentleman walking by here. We've got our gentleman here, and I'm just going to add a new effect. In this case, I'm gonna add the mosaic effect. And as soon as I add that on there, it kind of blurs out my screen, not what I want. It's because the effect is on. I'm just gonna turn that off. And this time I'm just going to draw a bezier curve around him. So I'm just going to draw a free, loose curve around him there and adjust this last point, pull it in fairly tight, being pretty loose with this here. So notice that it's not gonna care too much about how I'm working with this. One other thing to note now that we're working with this Bezier tool, I find that a lot of times if I try grabbing the point, sometimes it'll grab the handle instead and that's pretty annoying for me. Uh, I can use my Alt Control to convert that into a linear point. Um, but you know, sometimes I actually do need the curves there. All right, so I'm gonna put on my mosaic effect again. You can see it's turned back on on his face and we're just gonna adjust that, All right? So I'm gonna take this mosaic effect and change this to maybe, maybe 150 by 150. There we go, he's properly blurred out now. And again, I have to track my masks. All right, so that's tracked one direction and I don't need it to track anymore because, you know, he's not in the scene anymore. So I can just leave that as is there. And we'll just move this forward. And I'm going to go ahead and track it forward. Now, in a situation like this, you've got to ask yourself, is it going to be faster for me to run this auto tracker 
If it's something that's very complex and complicated, like say something like this, absolutely, I would. But if it's just someone's face, you may just want to make a couple keyframes and walk it along as if you were doing a roto. Uh, that may be a little bit faster for you. That's totally up to you. And again, our gentleman has left the scene here, so we can just stop it there. And at this point, I would just take this effect or this expansion here, and I would just add a keyframe, go a frame or two, and change that down to zero. Now let's take a look at doing just a part of color correction on this motorcycle here. So I'm gonna do just this one piece here. Another challenge that I have with using the rigid mass tracker for complicated scenes in Premiere is that there's no really easy way to zoom in or zoom out. If I just scroll in and scroll out like I do in After Effects, that works out great. But here I constantly have to switch between say like 200% and then I can't scroll around. I have to actually grab these handles here and create my mask that way. I'm gonna go ahead and add a color balance to this here. And let's go ahead and use this pen to draw out our mask. All right, so I'm just gonna speed this up here so that way you don't have to watch me do my actual points here, but you'll get the gist of it. All right, so I've got my mask and now I'm gonna go ahead and track it again. One other thing to note, when you're doing something like this, if I needed to mask out all these individual pieces like I did before, uh, I have to go ahead and actually track each individual mask. So in that other example, I had this section masked, then this one, this one, and this one, all separate masks, and each one needed to be done completely separate uh, instead of lumping them all together and saying, no, all of these are connected to one effect. So there's currently no way to lump them all together and track them all at once. All right, so you can see that there's quite a lot that happens in there. And again, if you don't wanna jump into After Effects, this is a great tool. Or if you just have a simple correction to make, let's say on someone's face or uh, you know a simple color correction or to blur someone out, also perfect for those kinds of problems. If you're doing a very complicated set where you have multiple objects, the same tool exists in After Effects with the mask tracker, and I find it just tends to work out a little bit faster. But for those of you who don't want After Effects or don't know After Effects, this is incredibly useful. I'm just gonna let this track finish up here, and we're just gonna apply a quick color correction, and we'll take a look at the before and after. And I'm actually going to replace this color balance with this RGB curves here. And I'm just gonna take that mask and paste it in our curves. I just find uh, I didn't mean to grab that color balance. I meant to grab my RGB curves. And so let's go ahead and make this a little bit more purple here. Pull out some of these greens. And right away you can see our color has changed here. Now I have my light that's purple here too, so I'd actually have to cut out a new mask and remove this effect to do that. But otherwise, we have our pretty easily tracked mask here. Now that's a very extreme example there, but it shows off what you can end up doing. And again, it's pretty darn clean, you know? Uh, this is something that I feel like if I cleaned up the color a little bit, the actual track is pretty darn good. All right, so I'm just gonna pull up my original example here, right? And you can see what I was talking about here. So each one of these pieces was actually tracked out independently. So we have this purple color balance and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different masks there. And then I also have this green color balance and I have all these different masks in here as well. So it can be a lot of work to get this shot, but it all depends if whether or not you wanna work in After Effects or Premiere. So that is the Rigid Mask Tracker in Premiere Pro. Hopefully you found this useful. If you like this, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, you can find more tutorials and I offer training at my website at stanislawrobertliberta.com. <laughs>